very excited about this. Tristan Tyler Blake is with us this half hour. He is founder and CEO of Machine Learning Society and Co Network. They're developing a global science and tech social network. Uh, Tristan, thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You have a, a couple of different projects you're working on. So, it's, it's, are the Machine Learning Society is that a business or is that like a an association or an organization? So that's a great question. And uh, you know, when I was designing this, I first created it as a community organization, one that uh, creates value for scientists and technologists around the world. Um, when I first started, I actually just created it to make some friends uh, in the tech space and it has grown to over 5,000 members. So uh, now you have a few friends. Now I have a few friends, right? <laughs> Can you and explain what machine learning is? In, in my mind, it's correlated or related to artificial intelligence, right? Yes, uh, so machine learning is a, a, a class of uh, problems where you could train a computer to uh, use existing data to come up with new predictions on, uh, for example, Mm, autonomous driving. Uh, you can train the computer to identify cancer, cancerous tumors through millions of images, scanning millions of images uh, through uh, various, you know, with, com with your compute resources. So it's really a way to um, enable the complex data that we have today that's coming in in government and uh, medical uh, to be leveraged and analyzed by a artificial intelligence, one that is, I think, a little bit more uh, narrow, narrowly focused and um, um, precise than ours. You know, it's really weird though. Alexa's starting to set the table before we get home. <laughs> that's a good thing. I don't argue with that. I don't know how she does it, but the table's all set now. That's machine learning, right? Well, that's... Actually, that's a joke. You know, Alexa doesn't really well, set the table. You know what? Um, I don't think it's a joke anymore. Really? I don't think it's a joke. So uh, every five years or so in the past, you would see an industry uh, uh, transform and you know every time you look at the cars outside right you see there's a new design pattern they're a little lower they're a little sexier mm -hmm. um, how fast does that rate of innovation happen when's the next time that you walk outside and you see all the cars are different or maybe there are no cars altogether there are different types of vehicles transportation vehicles uh, that's what I came here to talk about today it's essentially we figured out how to innovate and now it's not only happening on an industry-wide level there are little micro revolutions happening in virtually every space, including podcasting, including uh, uh, you know uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, medicine. And in medicine, there are multiple tiny revolutions happening in there as well. And the types of syringes we use, right? the the material science that governs uh, the way that we. Uh, clean uh, uh, our homes and the way that we clean our medical devices. So the world is a change. I mean, everybody that's alive and out in the world at all knows things are moving at an unparalleled, unprecedented pace. I think it's one of the most amazing times to be alive in the history of mankind. Yeah. What a great time. And you're all of, what, 30 years old. So you still have a lot of years left to see this grow. You know, I, I thought I missed it. I, I, Seriously, I, when I was uh, in my from my twenties to my thirties, uh, uh, up to about twenty-seven, I, I, I was fairly depressed with uh, with society, and I thought we were all going downhill, and there was no shining light. And then I, I had a conversation with uh, two attorney friends of mine actually in New York, and they told me that you know look at that TV over there. We were sitting in a hookah bar. Look at that TV. Look how much intelligence went into creating this thing that that shows a picture and an image and it's high quality look how much effort intellectual human power went into that and i said you know what building bridges is extraordinarily complex and it should be um it should be something that's valued and appreciated and i was thinking about the bridges that were being destroyed but that's one perspective so I discovered technology and it really saved my life and it gave me true meaning and purpose. So did you think that the big move in technology was kind of over and done with? I thought I thought into I thought intellectualism was finished. I thought Einstein oh, and Niels Bohr were oh, the last times oh. that humans really you know had a discussion about the nature of an atom and splitting it and really those cafe conversations where brilliant men and women would come together and try to understand the nature of the universe where, where Plato would get together with friends and ask what are those stars what are they made of who, who are we and what is consciousness the Einsteins and the Neil Bohr's of the world though they were so much less accessible than the brilliant minds of today I mean you look at what the internet has actually done and it's revolutionized information sharing 
How could you? I mean, you're, you're a product of this this uh, generation that grew up with the internet, and yet you were looking out at the world saying these didn't. What, what, do you remember a moment where that it it switched and you said, you know what, we we really do still have that type of intellectual revolution going yeah, on? Yeah, the moment I touched down in San Diego. Ha! Literally, the moment I touched down from the, where? From New York. So y New York I was in was, finance. New York was void of what you were looking for. You get to San Diego when it's here. <laughs> well, I have, I, have a I, have, I have a chapter with about 1,300 members there. Yeah. Uh, so, so I can't talk too much about New York, but uh, certainly... Uh, At there, least your circle was not what you were looking for. Right, right. Uh, uh, just when I came here, there was an unparalleled uh, uh, level of collaborative energy and, and creativity. Just intellectual curiosity roamed the streets, and, and San Diego's pregnant with powerful new ideas and that's why I'm here and that's why I didn't move on to Silicon Valley. Funny enough, we hear that story over and over and over again that we we are in a I want to use the word verdant. We're in a very verdant area. I just I, I know that means lush. Yeah. Fertile, yes. <laughs> I worked that word in. I, I, I appreciate I it. I wanted to use that word today. <laughs> we have a very verdant very verdant area. <laughs> Three times I've said it. Okay. Now. Tristan Tyler Blake is here, founder and CEO of the Machine Learning Society and Co Network. We're going to get back to that. MLSociety.com is the website. Go there. This is Biz Talk. I'm Bob Ryan. I'm Montana Smith. And I'm Aaron Canada. Don't you dare go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You need to check Facebook. It's not mine. Go ahead, take off I'll take it off? Yeah. Why would I link Do I need to? No. Yeah. I could just leave it on. Yeah. Okay. That's where I come from. Trying to go live. It might have just been the, the connection. I like well, tight spots. While you, while you have it off, maybe you can show them how to mute the sound in the phone. It still says trying to go live. I'm wondering if it's having an issue with the... Um, Did you pull down the top menu and mute it? Like. No. It's okay because Facebook and LinkedIn are my competitors, direct competitors. <laughs> I don't want them to know what we're working on. We're right. essentially developing a compatibility uh, platform that um, in existing social networks, you have to go and connect with people. What we're doing is we're uh, identifying what you're looking to do in science and tech, and then we uh, stimulate those relationships. So when we come back, yeah. we'll talk about what you were looking for, what you found in San Diego, and how that's, that's being implemented. Okay, sure. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. something the matter with the connection because it's just trying to go live. It's not able to um, connect. Throw it against the wall. That might work. Yeah. I hate that phone anyway. I'm a firm believer in... I got a Google I phone and I went on the Google Fi plan to frozen. try it out. Do you want to switch over to your it's phone? It's enough different I have from the it's not gonna Android base phone, board? which is what I'm Google finish. wrote. Let me it drives me yeah. crazy. And, and this live video okay. I don't know how to do anything on it. It's got all these functions that are meaningless to me, but... I keep turning on the uh, uh, the the max, the max size screen, and I can't make it go away. So I see like part of the screen in really big letters, and I can scroll all around it, but I can't make it go away. There's a way to do it. I know there we, is. Um, I've only had the phone for a year. I'll figure it out. If we, <laughs> yeah. if we miss uh, the Facebook Live, we're running um, a film. We got another video, video in we'll here. Post. You'll, you'll I'll post, post it up. Okay, to cool. Do you know Stephen McCloskey? Live. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is he watching today? No, I, I just, a lot of what he's talking about reminds me of the white paper he created for Matrix. Yeah. Um, his yeah. blockchain based collaborative mm -hmm. collaboration. Yeah. Um, it's not going live. I, I okay, even ended okay. the video and tried to restart no. it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it here in case it does. Yeah. <coughs> Five seconds, Aaron. Okay. Welcome back. You're listening to Biz Talk, Believing is Seeing Talk Radio, where we walk the talk. Our guest today, he wears three berets, and we'll hear all about that. He is an explorer, a writer, and a technology diplomat. Meet Tristan Tyler Blake, founder and CEO of Machine Learning Society. I'm Montana Smith. I'm Eric Canada. I'm Bob Ryan. Tristan, thanks again for coming in. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a real desire for this intellectual stimulation well beyond what most mortal humans would want to go to, right? I, I don't agree with that. I think uh, intellectual curiosity is uh, embedded in all of us. It's just a matter of um, targeting those expensive neurons, the ones associated with uh, passion, creativity, um, 
right now media creates, uh, well, cheap neuron movies, right? Uh, violence and guns and car chases. Um, I would like to see a movie about uh, where the world is the way it is today and then AI fixes it because uh, that's the mission that we have and we want to remove that fear, those cheap neurons, and target a little bit more of those expensive ones. So you created this society mm -hmm. to join with like-minded people and share ideas and commiserate and, and maybe create some things. Mm -hmm. So what, what has now happened as a result of doing that? Sure, well, and just to kind of get back to what we were on, I, I really wanted to send a little message uh, and that's you, you don't want to you don't want to miss this revolution. You don't want to watch it. You want to lean in and participate. This is your moment to uh, to create and change. You have the tools. I, I others that it can be done and that it should be done with uh, modern technology. And for those that don't know, WordPress is a web design tool that yeah. allows you to create really high quality websites. Yes, yeah. but to have a Facebook quality uh, social network like Co Network, which uh, our idea is is not, you know, not to essentially to connect people the same way that LinkedIn or Facebook does, but uh, we want to ask them, what is your goal? Do you want to co-found a company in, in genomics? Do you want to find research partners or, or um, some sort of other you know, compatibility matches and have our algorithms add people to your network? and create uh, um, opportunities for you to connect and create together. It, it really does feel like we're on the precipice of an artificial intelligence revolution. Why now? I mean, th 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 that term's been in our lexicon since at least Alan Turing, right, in the Turing test and, and, and maybe before. What's different about now? What were the limiting factors that, that caused us to go this long before we're actually able to see the technology borne out? Uh, because individuals can now act as nation states. Before it was dependent upon government to invest in some sort of technology um, in order for it to thrive, right? So, uh, uh, the Human Genome Project, the rocket launches, right, Sputnik. Um, well, what happens when Elon Musk decides personally to transform transportation and to say, I don't like the way it is, I'm going to grab my friends and a couple of other really brilliant folks and, and change it and build and create things that well, push us into a new direction as a species. And, and for example, he recently launched uh, uh, three rockets, two of which landed, and, and you know, it was faster, cheaper, better, and most importantly, sexier than any other nation state ever could. And that is the power of this artificial intelligence I, revolution. I love that notion, but do you, do you think indiv real individuals, I mean, when, when I hear the word Elon Musk, it's one thing to say, hey, if you're a billionaire, you can go out and play around with some of these ideas. Is it accessible for the masses? Or can individuals like myself act as nation yes. states? Come to one of our community events. We're building something called a synthetic infrastructure in San Diego. Uh, did we ask for permission? Absolutely not. Are we going to? Never, uh, never in a million years. We're just going to do it. We're going to build a system fully autonomous uh, in San Diego, and we're going to bring everybody that wants to develop that corporations, uh, individuals, data scientists, to come and volunteer and do it until it's done. And then, well, we're going to sell it. The, mechani the mechanism you're doing this with is with your offering a co-network. Exactly, right? yeah. Now, is that that's up and running now? So the Machine Learning Society is the predecessor of the co-network. Right. The Machine Learning Society is a physical uh, network where we co come together and I, I host hackathons. In real life types. Right, yeah. conferences. Um, we have one upcoming, which I encourage you to um, sign up for. We have a scientific petition out. We're uh, trying to gather 5,000 signatures to invite 50 of the world's most foremost experts in deep learning and biology to come to San Diego and really find that intersection, that, that Rosetta Stone between bio and AI. I think that this is the year for it. And um, that's on our website, ML Society. Uh, so if you're a technical expert or just somebody that wants to uh, eliminate cancers, Alzheimer's, uh, just find better ways to treat the body and, and, and the mind. Uh, so right now, the, where people should go to learn about this is ML Society. That's right, yeah. And that's in, and again, is the co-network concept up and running? Can people register for this now? Yes, there's a primitive version of that, right. which I built on WordPress. It's kind Our, of like a beta, big gamma, delta exactly. version? Exactly, yes, yes, yes. There? Our Cuban team. Yeah. Um, you have a Cuban team? A Cuban team of designers and developers, and they get it. They, they know revolutions. And this is no different, but Have this you, one is a technology one. Do you get to go to Cuba when you're uh, in Cuba? I, I'm, I'm going to go to Cuba. Are you going to go to Cuba? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm, not le I'm not moving there, but... No, no, no. But I, I, so I grew up on the East Coast near Cuba. I remember the, the Bay of Pigs. 
Yeah. You don't even know what that is, do I, you? Well, you I, lived in no Miami. I lived in Miami for three and a half years. I, <laughs> the Bay of Pigs was the closest we ever came to nuclear war before. Yeah, yeah. So you'll anyway. find that in history books too, though. Yeah. Younger people know what the Bay of Pigs are, I think, in general. Or at least we should. I, yeah. I hope. Fingers crossed. You've read about, about it in the history books. Well, I, it, it is a <laughs> big piece of our. our I'm just amazed that what I know about <laughs> lived through everybody's reading about in history. I'm not that old. No, you're yeah. Not. So, anyhow, back to what what you're doing. You have a you have a primitive version up and running. How how. Uh, long do you think it's going to be before you have the version that you're looking to use of the... 36 the days and uh, about uh, 17 hours. <laughs> you just pulled that out of the How could you be so mad? You know, 87.7% like of all statistics are made up on this time. No, no, I... I, I um, you actually have a launch date? Yes, I do. Yeah. No. And it's not vaporware anymore? It's going to be real? It's going to be real. And oh, it's going to be out there and you're going to be able to use it and connect. Uh, we're going to... We already have the most comprehensive list of uh, events in the computational space uh, in the world, so we're posting that right now. You know, I'm still trying to figure out why water expands when it freezes to ice instead of contracts, because cold things are supposed to get smaller. Mm -hmm. Do you think somebody could answer that for me? It's, a, it's quite a complex uh, question. I if, if know! You, so, it's got a lot to it. So in between us right now, there yeah. are so many subatomic forces and, and particles happening that just to explain what's in between us, we're about a foot and a half away, requires uh, decades of study and PhD work. So you see life a bit differently than I do. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you look at something, it may not be solid. To me, you know, there's nothing between us, but you see stuff. Well, I, I know there is stuff, and, and I'm excited by the fact that... Uh, that you know that. There's a universe of uh, exploration that you can do. And This is very cool. The co-network is what you're building of, of technology and science professionals, yeah. people interested L in LinkedIn, with LinkedIn without the marketers and real estate agents. <laughs> yeah. Tristan Tyler Blake is here, founder and CEO, Machine Learning Society, Anco Network. This is Biz Talk. I'm Bob Ryan. I'm Montana Smith. I'm Aaron Kanata. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You have a very almost like poetic way of speaking about this. It's, it, 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 it's really fun to listen to. Oh. Um, so actually, uh, and that's because I'm not a scientist or a technologist. I'm, I'm an artist. Um, I've, I've, I've learned that over time. Uh, I actually consider myself more of a architect, a community architect in this case. The scientists and the data scientists, they're the artists, and it's my responsibility to build a roof over their canvas so that it doesn't get wet and bring people in to see the masterpiece. Uh, my role here is not to program. There's enough doctors. We need more nurses is really the kind of the role that I play here. We didn't talk about his three berets. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a, a, a ton here. I like your three berets. I like the analogies behind that. Oh, thank you. Where were you raised? Uh, I was raised in, 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 no, I was raised in New York uh, until the age of 17. So what language did you speak in the home? Russian. Russian. Russian, yeah. yeah. And then Let's go ahead and get a picture. Like Brighton Beach area? Uh, yeah, close to there, yeah, Staten Island. Staten Island. Go ahead and move your chair. Keep your headset on, move your chair over by the Should I put it on? Yeah, put it on. Okay, okay. Okay, that's good. Got it. You know, it's amazing that that picture doesn't pick up the crack in the I know. cover. We can't get the cover off. It's our friend's camera. And he's our friend Ken, who is normally here, lost his son last week, 22 years old, mm -hmm. and um, so he's dealing with that right now. That's his camera, and I can't get the cover off the, so we have one the lens. Segment. Okay. And in one minute before we wrap up the segment, I'll flash you the sign. Don't mm -hmm. stop talking. Okay. I'll take you out, but that's just a heads up. You know, if you don't want me to say I'm going to hook up on LinkedIn, you probably shouldn't say I'm going to flash you. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay, on that note, we're coming back in. <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to Biz Talk, the Leaving is Seeing Talk Radio, where we walk the talk. And I'd like to apologize to our listeners today. We have a problem, technical problem, with our Facebook 
uh, transmission, but we will. We threw the camera up against the wall three times and it still doesn't work. Yeah, Bob did that oh, and he clicked you. his heels yeah. together too, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we will upload the video from in the studio later on today. And getting back to our guest, uh, Tristan Tyler Blake, founder and CEO of Machine Learning Society. And he says there are many micro revolutions happening, and he says we should lean in. We welcome him to the show today. I'm Montana Smith. I'm Aaron Canada. I'm Bob Ryan. Tristan Tyler Blake is here, founder and CEO, Machine Learning Society and Co Network. Uh, Tristan, thanks again for coming in. MLSociety.com is where people should go to learn about this. Yes. You're launching the the is it will it be a beta version or an alpha version? Are you are you launching a real you know like it's a gonna, live? It's going to be a continuous uh, integration, and over time, um, you know, you should expect uh, every week you sign on, it's, there's going to be something new on there, and that's the type of uh, well, that's exciting. Yeah. So you're you're developing this for science and tech folks. Par par yeah, particularly, I think nobody else focuses on this area. They always. Uh, uh, want some kind of business, uh, ap you know, uh, application or something, and I just said, well, I want the science. I, I don't care about the money per se. I, I, it will come just due to the nature of the uh, industry and its relevance in today's economy and, and tomorrow's. So how you you said this will be like Facebook or LinkedIn, but without all the marketing and the sales and all that right, stuff, which you kind of get inundated with with yes. all those. That's because they have a, a so number one. I mean the way that they design the culture of their networks, and that's what we're particularly uh, focused on. We design culture tech. Uh, we're, I consider ourselves a culture tech company. Uh, we design culture and then we disseminate it and that's based on values and based on the principles of uh, essentially, um, you know, th they're on our website but it's transparency, it's creating um, collaborative models rather than competitive ones. There is a way for all of us to benefit uh, without having to uh, fight over uh, limited resources. You know, we're finding in the co-working space people that are like you, an artist, married up with a scientist that does some in-depth research. It's amazing when you get an artist and a scientist or a technologist and a, and a water expert together. Yeah. The stuff that comes out of this, yeah. and I'm guessing that's part of the idea of your platform, yeah. is to allow that kind of creativity to, to flourish. Have, to have fun, to, to explore. Um, I, 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 I'm hosting this one event. Uh, it's uh, mathematics debate night, Bayesians versus frequentists, and the goal what? of that. Yeah, the goal of that is. Wait, and, that. and some people actually view this as fun. Oh my God, it's it's <laughs> so much fun because the mathematicians that go on stage they have to not only use uh, uh, mathematical rigor but also humor to persuade their audiences. Right? They wait. They're in math and they have to use humor too. Exactly. I is this that. like the Math Olympics that they hold in London <laughs> and Beijing each year? Uh, so those are very. Um, those um, are very high tech. Yeah. They, well, well, I mean we're. We also have very high tech. There's a whiteboard and everything, but you have to be entertaining. Um, uh, I think today we we can do both. You don't have to be just uh, rigorous and hardcore. So and, we you know, want scientists to have the soft skills as well. You can cure cancer on the weekdays, and rock climb or motorcycle on the week weekends. But you sure. know what's interesting about this is you say you know we're, we're leaving the business aspect aside, but we have a lot of VCs on, a lot of angel investors. They say the one thing that people really struggle with is telling their story in the right way, and that's what they have to do if they're going to fundraise, if they're really going to make a business out of the technology, out of what, what it is that they're focused on. They have to know how to tell the story, and that sounds, a, as an artist, that's obviously something that's really important to you. Do you, I mean, was that really not um, part of the, the the purpose of doing this, or did you purposefully make it ancillary, like a, a side effect too? So, so when, t when you when you build a company today, you shouldn't only focus on product and service. You should also f focus on the reason and and why you do it. Uh, what problem are you solving? Because I think the customers today require the value system that you have to be in line with theirs. Um, it adds complexity, but um, it really creates a, a, a truly powerful product that can that can live and breathe on its own. And we also have an economy that allows that. Yeah. There have been times in our past where the economy was so tough, just bringing shareholder value and return on investment yeah. was everything everybody yeah. could do. That's almost a given in our world today. Right. Yeah. Now you have conscious capitalism and yeah. social responsibility. I think it's a time to demonstrate leadership and courage uh, as, as a civilization and, uh, and as individuals. Um, you know, that's my personal goal. I, I try to um, say what is right and not what is uh, convenient or what is you know politically or economically uh, uh, beneficial 
for me, courage and leadership is, is so lacking in the economy right now and in, in our systems that uh, I believe that is a selling point, and I encourage others to follow in that. You wear a beret. Yes. I wear a fedora. I'm a fedora guy, right? You wear a beret. <laughs> a you, don't, beret. you don't see a lot of guys wearing berets. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to do. But you have a point in, in your beret-wearing adventures. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I'm a student <laughs> of history. Beret-wearing adventures. It is. It's <laughs> a, you, when you wear a hat, you have an adventure. I, 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 I'm a student of history. I, I studied international relations and diplomacy before this whole uh, tech uh, journey. And, uh, you know, I find that... Artists wear berets um, uh, in you know in Europe, and as a creator, you want to share you you, you want to create that idea, and, and, and an artist represents that, and they wear a beret. Uh, but also green berets, right? They're warriors, and and they protect, defend uh, their country, and and I defend my ideas uh, with with the second beret, and the third one is actually you know Che Guevara. He's an inspiration where he launched a revolution and even though that one um, you know caused a lot of pain and misery I, b I believe technology revolutions are ones that uh, remove pain and misery they're the ones that uh, reduce the amount of pain and addiction as a result of that uh, pain mitigation right so you have to create defend and spread your ideas today uh, for any company organization or community and that's the BlackBerry for you. You have to have a, an amazing view of life different from a lot of people because of the amount of technology you do see. What part of what you're doing, whether it's emotional, physical, personal uh, technology, what part of it excites you the most as we kind of wrap up our, our time together? Yeah, you know, I, I look out every time. Uh, so at the end of this interview, the world has just changed. Somewhere in some lab, somewhere. Somebody has discovered a new way to do uh, material sciences, you know, graphene, for example, uh, uh, or, or somebody has figured out a new way to defeat a certain cancer. Every time you open your phone, you're going to start in about a year or two seeing that, oh, we just solved this big problem and that big problem. And really, that's uh, kind of... Ex your, imagina your imagination is not limited anymore by what you can do, and I just encourage you, whoever you are, go and find what you want to solve and solve it. You have the tools now. Tristan Tyler Blake, founder and CEO of Machine Learning Society and Co-Network, coming out in uh, 36 days? Yes, uh, that's right. <laughs> in some hours, 36 yeah. days, developing a global data science and tech social network, mlsociety.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You, you're listening to Biz Talk, Believing and Seeing Talk Radio, where we walk the talk. I'm Bob Ryan. I'm Montana Smith. And I'm Aaron Tanata. Love the song. We'll be right back. We're going to talk banking, and it will be interesting. I know that sounds strange, but it will. Stay with us. Nicely done. Oh, nicely, thank you, nicely guys. Done. People hear blockchain, they think it's interesting, they hear banking, and they go, what? <laughs> <laughs> They're the same thing. Banking? <laughs> They're the same thing. Okay, guys, let's get you to switch. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can you stick around for the rest of the yes, show? Yes, yes, Oh, great. Left the jokes. <laughs>